family. Today, like I said, we're starting a brand new series I'm so ex excited for. It's called Love Where You Live. Therefore, I thought, why not take our cameras to the outdoor neighborhood, to my front step where Pastor Sean Lee and I live in our neighborhood to talk about what it means to neighbor well. In the New Testament, Jesus, whose teachings we follow pretty closely and we think they're pretty important, gave Christians a couple of things to live by. One of the th things they gave us to live by is found in Matthew 28, and we know it as a great commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And just a few chapters before that, Matthew 22, somebody asked Jesus what was the greatest commandment. And we find what we know as a great commandment, and this is what it says. Matthew 22 22:34 it says but when the pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply they met they met together to question him again one of them an expert in religious law tried to trap him with the question teacher which is the most important commandment in the law of moses and jesus replied you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. This series, we're focusing on loving your neighbor. To love where you live. And this is the series designed to help us neighbor well. I believe God is calling us as Christians to neighbor well. So as we jump in today, can I just pray? Can we just open our hearts and our minds and ask the Lord to help us be good neighbors? God, today as we jump in, would you open our hearts and open our minds to help us be good neighbors? God, in this crazy season of highs and lows, our neighbors still share our property lines. Would we hear from your word today and make steps to becoming better neighbors? In the name of Jesus, amen. Last Sunday afternoon, we gathered at the HQ for communion. It was Easter. And as we gathered, I briefly talked about how people in our communities are hurting. So many people are just having a struggle right now. And more than ever, people in our neighborhoods, people next door to us, need to know that somebody's thinking about them and that they're not alone. You know, we say it often that, that you're not alone, and we know that. But the crazy thing is there's so many people who don't know that they're not alone, and they're feeling hopeless. Now, this is not something new to us. But COVID has highlighted it to so many people. People are hurting. So last Sunday, as we met, we had some simple door hangers printed up. It just says, hey, hey neighbor, this past year has been cha a challenge, but you got this. We're in this together. You're not alone. There's a little place to put, you know, from your neighbor at whatever your, whatever your house number is and your phone number and your name. And, and we encourage people to take 10 of them and just give out uh, in our neighborhood. And guess what? We did it. We, on on su Monday afternoon, our family drove through Tim Hortons. We grabbed $10 gift cards and placed on each one of those. And we added gift cards to each one as we walked around our neighborhood and we hung them on doors of our neighbors just to let them know, hey, you're not alone thinking about you. We're in this together. Last year has been nuts, but guess what? We're still here. We're still in this together. And something incredible happened. It's crazy how a piece of paper can actually make a difference. And maybe you've seen evidence yourself if you uh, were able to take some and put them out. But this is what happened. The barriers in our neighborhood began to come down. Now, to clarify, our, our, our neighbors have been kind. They're great. You know, we pass by on the road, and we wave, and we smile. And even in the wintertime, every now and then, we'll shovel 
uh, the seniors uh, walkways and, and driveways in our cul-de-sac. There's even one person on our street that kind of does a yard work for, for like four other houses. But most of the time, we just live busy lives. And that's pretty much as far as the relationship goes. But last week, just by hanging a simple door hanger, something began to change. We hung door hangers on Monday around 2 p.m. And within 48 hours, catch this, within 48 hours, we already had a conversation with seven families that we didn't know. Conversations, phone calls, texts. We even had people delivering us gifts. It's kind of like, hey, you gave to us. We're going to give back to you. We have began to see the walls in our neighborhood come down and we're already having discussion on like how can we have social distant outdoor conversations in our cul-de-sac you know like i said we've we've loved our home we've been here for seven years we bought it because it was on a cul-de-sac it was a pie shape and i can get into the whole story of the the way that god provided for where we live today but it was only last week that as some of the barriers began to come down with a simple act of hanging a little note on people's door, that we don't just love our property, we began to love where we live. Some of the barriers like age, stage of life, different lifestyles, different beliefs started to break down. Like I said, we, we had good neighbors before, but we just went on about our lives. And with a simple act, just hanging something to say, we're with you, seemed to break something in the atmosphere. And although there's more fear and anxiety about the future, and I think we all feel that and all see that, although there are more fear and anxiety about the future, personal barriers right now is lower than any other time in history. See, for decades, we've been trying to keep people out. It's kind of like, let's build fences and let's put property lines up and let's, let's keep people, let, we just need our space. But today, right now, in the middle of this pandemic, with all the restrictions that we face, people are desperate just to have somebody in. And I don't mean like into their house, but into their lives. What if getting closer and letting someone in could be a reimagine in this time because physically we can't be close we're not permitted in this moment to go into people's homes but what if we rethought it and instead of looking at what we can't be doing we began to see what we can be doing with personal uh, with personal barriers being lower than ever right now we wanted to talk about loving where you live to love your neighbor as it is one of the, 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 you know, the second part of the greatest commandment Jesus gave to us. Today in this series, I want to focus on that. The thing that Jesus identified as a second greatest commandment, love your neighbor. Now, I also want to be clear, you know, maybe you invited a neighbor to watch with you online. Maybe one of my neighbors are watching right now. If you're watching and you're a neighbor, this is not some trick that you're watching today. I'm not promoting, prom uh, promoting or uh, imposing a sneaky way to tell you about Jesus. This is not a backdoor presentation to people. But I really genuinely want us to discover, us to discover together what it means to be a good neighbor neighbor it really doesn't matter what your background is what your age is what your beliefs are i believe that you can benefit from what we're going to talk about in this series see every person can help bring neighbors close and neighbors neighborhoods are way better when we are close and again i don't mean just physically close i just we can become closer in our spirits and in our lives jesus said love your neighbor he didn't say just love, even though it's important for us to love. He didn't say just love people. He said, love your neighbor. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. 
And some of us, I get it. We're, we're, what we're doing right now, we're, we're thinking right now, pastor, I know God called me to love my neighbor, but I think outside the box. My neighbors are my coworkers and my friends' parents and, and those I work with and my schoolmates and the people I go to church with, not necessarily the people I happen to live next door to. But in Matthew 22 and in Luke 2, the word neighbor in the original Greek, which the, uh, the New Testament was written in the original Greek, it, it's, it's, it's like this. It's called plesion. And plesion is the root word for near or near to. So in other words, a neighbor is someone close by. So here's the big idea. Ready for your mind to be blown? The big idea of the word neighbor means actual neighbor. Someone living close to you. So in the Bible, the greatest commandment is recorded in Matthew and in Luke. But in Luke's account, see we've re- we read from Matthew just, uh, just at the beginning. But in Luke's account, when this question was asked to Jesus, what qualified somebody as a neighbor? Jesus responded with the famous parable, the Good Samaritan. And many of us know it. And if you don't know it, I'd encourage you to go and read it after the service today. But this is what people were trying to do. People were trying to get around caring for their neighbors by redefining who their neighbors were, by focusing on maybe current issues or, 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 a, or a convenient agenda for them rather than dealing with the needs right in front of them. See, the heart of the answer is that everyone needs love. No matter how different from you, no exceptions, God is calling us to love people. Like I said, obviously Jesus is saying, hey, love everybody. But if God is calling us to love everybody, shouldn't it also be our neighbor, or at least it start with our neighbor? Here's something that I've been challenged with, and I feel like we need to understand. Is that the people around you were placed near to you for a reason. And over the past three weeks, this thought has been like, you know, (laughs) rolling around in my head that I wonder if our busyness, our self-centered living, taking care of number one, has made neighboring less than God intended it to be. I believe that God is active in every part of my life. And many of you would probably think the same, that God is active and moving in every part of your life. So if that's the case, where we currently live, where we sleep at night, where we eat lunch and dinner, and and where we spend most of our time, it's not by coincidence. That if we believe that God is active in every part of our life, the people that he's placed you next to and the people that he's placed you next to is put there by him. I wonder if out of a desire to make everyone neighbors, is it possible that we've made no one neighbors? Catch this. In Acts uh, 17, in Acts 17, Turn my Bible over the right way. In Acts 17, I will get there. I'm getting there. In Acts 17, 24 to 27, Paul is speaking to philosophers in Athens, and this is what he says. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, He doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything. He satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided, catch this, he decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their 
boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel, feel, feel their way towards him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Did you catch that? He created all nations through the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. What if we viewed, church, friends, family, what if we viewed the place we're blessed to lay our heads at night and to wake up in the morning that God has sovereignly placed you there? The home that you live in, the apartment that you rent, the dorm room that you share. What if we viewed where we live as though God placed you there because he knew that you are the best person to love your neighbor? Did you catch it? You were placed. We just read it. He determined the boundaries. Now, I know what some of us are thinking, because I thought this way. I thought this. I don't understand why I should automatically be friends with the people just because I decided to live where I live. You know, the house was nice and the property was nice and we decided to get a mortgage on this place. Why do I have to be friends with my neighbors? Right? I'm neighbors with my, my coworkers and my kids' sports moms and dads and, and, and what the list goes on or the people I play basketball with. And if you would have asked me a month ago, I probably would have agreed with you. Hey, you, your neighbor is everybody. I'm just going to mind my own business. I'll smile and keep the peace in my neighborhood as best as I can. But I think God has actually set us in place for this very time. And you living where you live, shouldn't it make a difference in your neighborhood? Shouldn't it make a difference to your neighbors? Church today. Our churches today have, have, have more literature, more media, more programs, more training to reach others than any time in history. But the church in many parts, specifically of North America, is declining. That's sad. We have all these resources but our churches are declining. I wonder, I wonder, could it be as simple as we've forgotten the most fundamental part of the process that Jesus said that it starts with our neighbors? Just imagine, Discovery Church, just imagine if God's people, if you and I caught a vision for the most basic command that Jesus gave us. Maybe in the middle of a pandemic, we would actually begin to see the 300,000 people in Edmonton who don't even know that Jesus is a choice start to come to know Jesus. Maybe we would actually see people in our lives that we share property lines with start to be curious and ask questions, to seek truth and to find purpose and to become fully engaged followers of Jesus or wherever you live, whether you're living in Ontario or Newfoundland or BC or, or someone throughout the States or somewhere in Europe or Asia, wherever you're watching or listening to from today, if we start living and loving our neighbors, maybe, just maybe, things would begin to change. So in this time where we're unable to gather, you know, we would gather in a, in a school gymnasium, churches, would gather in their buildings. But we don't need four walls and a, and a space to lead people to Jesus. Actually, maybe one of the biggest setbacks that we have created in church culture is that we need to invite someone to church. And get me, I, I, I think it's important to invite people into a community that they can experience and the love of Jesus. I think it's important. But if the only place that we can lead somebody to Jesus is when we invite somebody to church so they hear me speak, then we're missing the most important and the most exciting part that God has given to you to go and make disciples, to seek and save the lost. 
And I'm not saying that it's not possible for people to come to know Jesus at church. I think it's very possible. We've seen over 100 people give their lives to Christ since we've launched. But right now, in this time, we're not gathering together in person. We don't have a building that will rent to us. Does that mean that the Great Commission is on pause? Does that mean that the Bride of Christ is paused? No. Maybe. Just think outside the box for a moment. Maybe, just maybe, God is bringing His Bride back to understanding that we don't need walls of a building to love those who are next to us. There's no walls anymore. Maybe, just maybe, God is on the move because we're not just inside of our buildings. I've said it before that if what we do in here don't fill the streets out there, then it's just a Christian club. And right now, we've got no walls. We're speaking from outside. My neighbor on one side and my neighbor on the other side. He said, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And we try to strategize and program and, and create all this media to reach people but what if the greatest strategy we're missing and that's to love our neighbor how would our neighborhood change how would our neighbors change if we begin to believe that God has placed us right where we are today for such a time as this that God knew from the beginning of time that he placed you in the middle of a pandemic to be able to love your neighbor so as we launch the series today I want to ask you a question do you love where you live will you allow God to move you to love where you live your neighbors depend on it your neighbors depend on you saying yes. My neighbors depend on me saying yes, that I will love where you live. So as we close today, I wanna give you a few action items. As we, we walk through this series, I wanna give you a few action items that we're gonna believe that God has ordained and placed us for such a time as this in the neighborhoods we live in. So here's a couple action items. You might want to write them down. You might want to go back and listen to this after. But this week, get to know the names of your neighbors directly on either side of you. You may already know their names, but you may not. Find a way. Come and grab a door hanger from the HQ. We'll even mail them out to you. DM us. We'll, we'll get them to you. Put your name on it. Say, hey, I'd love to, to have a text conversation. If you need anything, get to know their name. The second thing is this, as you drive into your neighborhood, maybe it's a street, maybe it's a cul-de-sac, maybe it's into your apartment building, would you slow down enough as you drive or as you walk or as you, as you jump into an elevator, would you slow down enough to pray and ask God to help you love your neighbors? Don't just rush in as fast as you can, slow down. And this week, it's getting nicer outside. Most of you who are watching, it's probably a little nicer outside than it was two months ago. Would you walk your street once this week and pick up any garbage that you may see laying around? Let's love where you live. Love the Lord your God and love where you live. And some of you watching today, you're like, man, I wanna love my neighbors. But the first part of that commandment, love the Lord your God, is not active in your life. I want to welcome you to give your life to Christ right now. If that's you, would you just say yes? Lord, I welcome you into my life. Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. Come into my life today. If you made that decision, I welcome you. Would you click the link in the comment section? Let our teams know we want to be praying for you. We want to send you a Bible. We want to celebrate with you. In just a moment, there's going to be three questions pop up on the screen reflect. Maybe you want a journal. Maybe you want to jump into the Zoom room. 
with, with a host and discuss and pray about them. But let's, let's actually learn to love where we live. Have an amazing day and let's neighbor well. See you again next week.